if you wanna retire comfortably, people are saying that you have to have a million dollars or more in the bank in investable assets, 401k, IRAs, or maybe not. That might not be the entire picture when it comes to retiring. You could retire on a lot less. And one of the predominant economists, Andrew Biggs, is saying 50 to $100,000 in total assets is really the experience of actual retirees at retirement, which means the proven evidence is there. In this article, in this video, we're gonna be covering kind of a different take on the retirement system. Now, most Americans retire with nowhere near a million dollars. Now, of course, a million dollars, that seven figures, is a pretty lofty goal, but it is noted that that much money is not really needed to retirement. Most of that information comes from opinion polls, personal financial columns, or two or three rules of thumb that most people have. Now, of course, financial advisors tell you 10 times your annual salary when you get into retirement. We'll give you the ability to pull off 4% of the balance every single year, but that would mean Americans need $1.46 million in the bank, to just retire comfortably. However, when we start surveying actual retirees, so this is looking at a survey of household economics and decision-making between 2019 and 2022, survey targeted age 65 to 74 and how well they are managing financially at the retirement age. Now, a majority of them, roughly 85% of them said they are doing just fine, they are living comfortably or they are doing okay. Well, 15% of them said that they were struggling financially, which means that a majority of, of retirees that do not have a million dollars in the bank were still doing incredibly well and even reported the satisfactory retirement balance was 50 to $100,000. Now, of course, we know things have got exponentially more expensive and it makes it a little more difficult, especially if you are during retirement, if you are carrying a lot of debt, which of course can be super detrimental. Now, the average couple that retired in 2022 got about $46,000 in social security benefits a year, which of course, not very extravagant, not a ton of money, but as a baseline of getting $46,000 a year, is pretty good. So a typical couple could expect an income more than twice the poverty level without ever touching or without having a penny in savings at all. So again, the retirement planners really overstate how much money you do have to be in there and also kind of overstate how much money that you need to save. But do you need that number? Do you need the 1.46 million to retire in style? You don't need to be a millionaire to do nothing. You don't need to be a millionaire um, to, to really be able to do anything with your life. And of course, when it comes to this, it's kind of interesting because a lot of places are also talking about the elimination of 401k plan. We're looking at the rising healthcare costs. There's a lot of different things that are kind of under scrutiny when it comes to retirement. But when you start looking big picture, and this is where it does get kind of interesting, when you start looking at the average amount that they actually have during retirement, you're looking at about $200,000 on average, which again is kind of crazy to think because of course, when you look at the $200,000 that is saved, looking at the ages 65 to 74, according to the 2022 survey of consumer finances, that is about the average. Now of those, a majority of individuals had about 50% of those had no retirement savings at all. That is right. They went into retirement. They went into that 65 to 74 age with zero in retirement, which again is one of the big reasons why it's kind of questionable when it comes to saving an ex extraordinary amount of money looking at the price tag. Now, I don't know about real people, and he quotes, um, who have retirement savings and those who don't. Retirement experts say people need about 80% of the pre retirement income to fund their retirement. Now, of course, this is gonna be very difficult and it's gonna be very different on a case-by-case -case basis. Social Security covers about half of that. Like we've said before, Social Security Administration says they cover about 40% of the pre-tax income, which means if you're trying to get to that 80%, 40% is coming from Social Security, 40% is going to have to come from somewhere, which for a majority of individuals that don't have any savings, it is just gonna be Social Security in its entirety. Now, one rule dictates that you should save again 10 times your average salary to supplement your Social Security. And again, for a typical American household, that is nearly $750,000, which is crazy because the median household income is around 75,000, meaning that that 750,000 would be 10 times that annual salary. And again, looking at the actual money that we have in retirement accounts, 
it is about that 200,000. This of course could really trigger the 4% rule. The 4% rule is something that we've talked about before. Um, a lot of people are saying 4% will cover your annual retirement savings and of course, without touching the principal. That's the big thing, guys, is where if you have a plan that is invested in, let's say, um, some really strong ETFs that are growing at, you know, 5, 10, 12%, if you're pulling 4% out of there with the growth factor, you should still have the ability for that ETF or that investment account to actually grow during retirement and without you taking out or eliminating the principal balance. Now, a lot of experts also say that that 4% is way too low and others contend that it's too high. We have seen people that are even saying 8%. Either way, it's very clear. If you're gonna live on a single digit percentage during requirement retirement, you're definitely gonna have to have some income. Now, of course, retirees reduce their spending pretty significantly as they age. This is, again, something that I feel like a lot of places and a lot of people do not take into account. Now, Biggs believes that the rule exists largely so investment houses can sell investment products and so personal financial websites can attract page viewers. That is kind of a bold statement because when you think about the money in investment houses, when you think of Vanguard, when you think of BlackRock, all of these large investment houses, if the money is being pulled out on a regular basis, they're gonna have less assets on their side, meaning the ability to invest, the ability to um do everything that we do kind of in the investment world. It's kind of crazy. Points out the 80% rule. Not many retirees um, spend 80% of their income, of their pre-retirement pre income. For a long time, 70% was recommended. And of course, it seems like it's getting a little bit higher as costs go up, which means the 80% rule might be a little bit on point. But again, for a long time, it was the 70% rule, meaning that when you got into retirement, you wanted to replace 70% of your pre-retirement income. Now, again, that seems like it's been increased a little bit. And retire retirement experts say that really meeting um, in, in the goals for retirement are supposed to be aspirational goals. So working people have something to shoot for in retirement, which again is kind of interesting because there's a whole psychological piece that goes into this we're at a point to keep people working. And again, I, I've kind of started seeing it as I've aged um, and, and got a lot more um, affiliated and a lot more into the workforce. It seems like really helping folks early in a career, going to mid-career, um, making sure that they're saving money, making sure that they're investing, making sure they're getting that compounding interest. And of course, for a lot of people, the ability to retire early might just be a pipe dream with trying to supplement their entire Social Security. But for a lot of people that actually plan properly like we do, early retirement will be easy because we know exactly how much we're spending. Now, all of this, guys, when it comes to retirement, really hinges on one thing that I do want to take a minute or two to talk about, and that, of course, is debt. When you start going in retirement, so when you think of your pre-tax income, when you start moving into retirement, and at that point, if you're carrying credit card debt, if you have auto loan debt, if you're carrying a mortgage, when you're going from your regular income to let's say 70 to 80% on a fixed income, the chances are you are not eliminating and you have not eliminated a majority of your bills. Going to a 20% reduction in pay is going to be detrimental for a majority of retirement plans, which is exactly what I see. I see a lot of people that are sacrificing their 401ks and their IRAs to go ahead, pull it out, possibly pay down some debt, but also buying and really having unnecessary expenses, which can de be very detrimental when it comes to a retirement plan. All right, guys, that does it for today's video. Do you really need $1 million in retirement savings? A lot of people say absolutely not, but we're only time will tell to see exactly where we land. So again, that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.